get started here. Uh, me and Glenn working on some uh, some things for the board up here, and they're not working out too good. So we're going to kind of do some uh, pictures on the board. Won't be near as good, but uh, we'll just kind of figure out how that goes. Whatever else. We're in chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 1. This is the start of the, of the tribulation period, if you will. This is the four horsemen. This is the first, first eight verses here, which we'll try to cover today here during those times. But kind of introduce it. I guess uh, you should have in your in your package that you have in your hand, like page nine. See the nine or nine eight, according to which one you do. Page nine is one about the great tribulation. And in case you didn't get, the, you don't have your hand out with you, or whatever. I'll try to do a just a little drawing up here, type deal, talking about the things that's happening. Here's our timeline. You can see this timeline from here all the way through chapter twenty-two. You will see this timeline a bunch, and according to which section of this timeline we're going to be dealing with, okay? Uh, we know that the church age was out here, okay? The rapture was somewhere out here, and this is the beginning of the tribulation time. The beginning of the tribulation time, remember, is the, is the sign of the peace treaty, peace accord, okay? Nothing else to start, starts that, nothing else defines it, except the sign of the peace accord, okay? Once the sign of the peace accord, and we'll look at that in a minute, we start in the period called tribulation, it's called I call it the Great Tribulation, but you know, a lot, of, a lot of people just call it Tribulation, whatever it may be. This Tribulation period is, is divided really into two halves. Okay, each one of them lasting three and a half years. The Great Tribulation period is seven years. We know that for a fact, and that will be to the day. The Scripture says if it went over the seven-year period, nobody would survive. That's why that's why God ended them seven years. In this first part, we have two sections here. The first. First quarter and the second quarter. Uh, this is the first half. Second half. This is the first quarter. Second quarter. At the end of this, we have a period here of 75 days. After 75 days, we start the millennium reign. In the millennium reign, we have a place called aftermath. After the aftermath, we call it eternal order. Okay? That's kind of the layout of the timeline that's going to be covered here from chapter 6 all the way through chapter 22. And in these, in these different aspects, in these chapters that's coming, there's many, many, many things that's going to happen. Okay? Uh, if you look at it, like in the first quarter, there'll be all these things, and you can see it up on the board up there, and they just go all the way across. And each one of those you see in your handout, we're going to discuss and talk about it. So you see why it's going to take a while to get through these because if you look just on the board up here, which I know you can't read exactly what it, can't read it, I can't point at it because I think got the battery in up backwards. It'd be a lot easier to turn the light on if had the battery in right. Or the battery's dead, one of the two, okay? Aha, it's backwards. You see in the different sections here in the, in, the, in the different parts, and here's a great tribulation one goes all the way across here. This is the first first quarter. Here's the second quarter. Here's mid-tribulation, and here's, a, here's a, the, sec, the, the second section or the second half of tribulation. Under these things is all of these things that's going to happen during those, and we are talk about them. Many of these things that's going to happen during these things are chronological, like i.e. The, the seal judgments, which we'll, we'll start on today in chapter 6, verse 1. These chronological events will go down through, you know, basically that entire period of time, but then we have also two things. We have chronological and, and, and non-chronological, if you will. Lost it. Ah, there it is. Okay. If you look at, and we have another, another chart, but uh, we didn't see that. If you look at basically... The tribulation period, we have what, what we know, the di different judgments, the seal judgments. Under the seal judgments, we have seven, we have seven events that happen, okay? The seventh event leads to the next set of, of judgments, and that's the trumpet judgments. Okay? It has seven events under it. The seventh event under that one leads to, leads to the last one here, and this is the bowl judgment. So you see how they kind of tie together, but they go through a chronological event of all the things that's happened on the earth during all these judgments during tribulation time. 
These we, we list on top. Down at the bottom, if you still have, if you have your, your chart out, you see a bunch of things down at the bottom. It's talking about the different things that are non-chronological. Of these things, uh, one is the, the Ten Kings, which we'll cover in chapter in verse 2 when we get there. Remember, the, when they, we go into tribulation time, as we're going through the church age, into the church age, Somewhere along the end of the church age, there's a period of time where the people of the north, or the armies of the north, come down and invade Israel. We don't know when that is. We know it's prior to tribulation time. A lot of people say it's when Russia comes down and invades Israel. Remember, we talked about that from the Daniel studies in about two weeks ago, and it's people from the north. People of the north is, they say it's Russia because Russia is directly north of Jerusalem. So they always, people say, well, it's Russia coming down to invade, to invade Jerusalem. That's not what Magog is talking about in Scripture. All those things that the people of the north coming down and invade Jerusalem covers Germany, Russia, Iran, on and on and on. Just a whole multitude of different countries, okay? When they come down to invade Jerusalem, they're under a period, period at that point in time of east-west reign. Let me raise, raise some of this off. Yep. I run out of room on the board already. <clears throat> This is, this is time period, so if you look back in the time of the Gentiles, the ruling faction, in, in as far as history goes, is east-west reign. This is, this is how the earth is basically laid out, if you will. That's kind of where we are right now, or have been for the last several years. East-west reign, the east part is Russia, the west, west part is democracy, basically it's the United States, okay? When Russia comes down and invades Jerusalem, as soon as they come down to invade Jerusalem, remember God takes over and destroys the armies, destroys the countries, everything else. So we come to a period and there, there is no more east. They're gone. So we basically have what we've got, you know, left over, I guess, is the West Range. That West Range, from east-west range, goes into the one world government. One world government, you know, I don't know how long, how long that's going to last. If you imagine one group of people trying to rule over the entire world is not Christ himself. I don't know how they do. How, how do you think that, the, that Palestine and all would react, it would react if the United States was ruling over the entire world? How would the United States react if Palestinians were ruling over the entire world? How would Christians react if non-Christians were ruling? How would non-Christians act if Christians ruling? So I think this one world government stage is going to be a very short period, very short period of time. Out of the one world government, it goes on, we get into what we call the Ten King stage. Ten King stage is going to start here at the end of the church age, probably just prior to tribulation beginning. The one world government is going to divide up into ten kings that's going to rule over the entire world. Okay? This ten king stage is going to continue from just prior to tribulation, basically, if you will, all the way into about mid-tribulation times. Okay? What's going to happen, we know the Antichrist rules and reigns. We'll pick that up here in just a few minutes. Rules and reigns for a while. Then at about the mid-tribulation time, the Antichrist is going to attack this three of these ten kings that's ruling and reigning. He's going to defeat those. Okay? Do away with them, take over that amount of power. The other seven of these ten kings are going to submit to the Antichrist. So if most people say this ten kings stage goes down to the seven king stage of ruling over the world. Also, if you look at Daniel, Ezekiel, and several other places, it is not the seven king, seven kings ruling and reign. In essence, it's eight. Because the Antichrist is ruling and reigning, he is superior to all these other seven. So he is doing them, and they're kind of under him. So basically, we say seven kings is remaining out of this ten things, and then you got one more, which is the Antichrist. Now, that's going, Antichrist is going to rule with them throughout the tribulation time. Once he gets in power, he's going to rule and reign, and everything that Antichrist says is going to be done all the way to the end of tribulation time. At the end of tribulation time, the end of the seven years of tribulation, the end of tribulation time, the Antichrist is going to be defeated, okay? It's going to be defeated, and during this 75-day period in here, going to be dealt with him and the false prophet and then they're going to the millennium reign. That kind of gives you the background of how the power is. 
what's happening in, in, in the country, in the nation, in the world during these, these, these separate different times, okay? Let's see where we are. Okay. The bottom of that talks about 10, the governments. Do you have a question on you? Okay. Okay. Oh, you're scratching your head. Okay. At the, and also, when we talked about, you know, on the thing here, the chronological orders, the single judgments, and the first things that happen in, during the tribulation time. And at the bottom on that same sheet, we have, you know, one, the, the ruling or governments, and we talked about here the 10 kings stage, the seven kings, and, and plus one, all this kind of stuff. At the same time, we have a thing called the Elijah's coming back. Elijah's going to come back prior to tribulation time, okay, in this area here, and his purpose for coming back is to solidify the Jewish families. Solidify, that's, it, that's his entire purpose. A lot of people think that, you know, Elijah is going to be one of the two witnesses, which we'll talk about later on. It's one of the other things that happens here is the two witnesses. Think that Elijah is part of the two witnesses. I don't think I believe that. But the largest purpose, and it tells us right in the scripture, the largest purpose is, is to solidify the Jewish family where the two witnesses is to witness throughout that period of time, you know, type deal to, to witness for God and bring a lot of people to Christ, along with the 144,000, okay? And there's lots of other reasons why I don't think it's Elijah, if you will. Me and you will discuss that, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, or when we get to the Elijah's room and that type deal uh, further on. I think it's in chapter... 11 or somewhere along in that, somewhere somewhere further on into Revelation, okay? So Elijah, the other is 144,000, the non-chronological events, 144,000. Just prior to tribulation beginning, or right at the very start of tribulation, remember the 144,000 is going to be saved by God, stamped with God's approval, and they're going to they're gonna basically evangelize the world during the first part of tribulation time, okay? That's the whole purpose. Anything, anybody tries to destroy them, they try to kill them. The people who try to kill them are going to be killed by God. So they'll be protected by God during that period of time. Okay? So 144,000. Elijah we talked about. Ministry of the two witnesses. Two witnesses we talked about. And we'll get all these things as we go through. Okay? This kind of overview of what we're looking at to go, go through in the tribulation time. And the last one is religious system. is hmm, Ecclesiastical Babylon. Okay? Basically, the, the spiritual move, spiritual, the church, not church, but spiritual religion that's going to happen throughout this tribulation time. And we get into that again as we get into, get into uh, you know, our, our study on over through. And I think it's like in, I don't know, 16, 17, somewhere in that range we talk about Ecclesiastical Babylon. Okay? So that's kind of an overview of who we're going and, what, and what we're going, where we're going coming from for a while. If you will, look at verse, chapter 6, verse 1. we we'll start with that. It says, chapter 6, verse 1. This is a seal of judgments. This is a chronological event that's going to happen at the beginning of tribulation time. Okay? This is happening in heaven, but it's associated with things that's going to happen on earth. Okay? Chapter 6, verse 1. says, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. Basically, he's talking about here, he said that they, we, I think it's chapter 4, chapter 4, we talked about that anybody able to open the seals. And you know, John was told nobody is able to open the seal. Nobody is qualified to open the seal except for one person, and that is Christ himself. Christ has now stepped up to here, and he has the scroll in his hand, the seal by the seven seals. And he is now opening the first of these seals. Okay? And one of the four creatures, we talked about four creatures, that surrounds the throne of God. God is sitting in the middle. We've got four creatures sitting around him. Then we've got 24 elders sitting around the throne of God. Okay? So as Christ reaches up and he opens this first seal, one of the creatures, one of the four creatures, and all of them will be associated with a different horseman or the horseman of the apocalypse, you know, type deal. But one of the four creatures will say, Come. Many people look at that and says, you know, we're telling John to come look and see. It's not what it is. If you look in Hebrew and all this kind of stuff, this come is to basically, he is, they are speaking to this to these four horses of the apocalypse and saying, come forth and go and bring your judgment on the world. Okay? So that's what, that's what they're talking about. He's speaking to them and not to John in this first section here. Okay? Is that at the beginning of the Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
I'm sorry? Yes. Remember, tribulation doesn't happen. Rapture happens out here somewhere prior to tribulation. Okay. Yes, yes. We're finished with the rapture. You and I are gone. Okay? We're no longer here. The tribulation is beginning with the signing of the peace treaty, the signing by Christ, by, by the Antichrist and the people and the Jewish nation. Okay? Once that is signed, tribulation begins. So that's where we are. We're right here at this point. The peace treaty is now signed, and we're beginning to do, you know, get into tribulation time. And these are the first acts of the seal judgment of tribulation time. Okay? The big part of verse, verse 2 of that. Let me see if I can, let me see where we are on our slides. We got some of them up here, some of them not. Okay. Four horsemen of the apocalypse. This is verses chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. The, the white horse, the fiery red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. These basically are the ones that we're going to talk about in these six verses, starting about the first judgments on the world. Okay? The first one of that is a white horse, and the white horse stands for conquest. Okay? Let me read it to you. Verse, verse 2 says, I looked, there before me was a white horse. His rider had a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, being on conquest. So basically, this white horse's purpose is basically for conquest of the conquest of the of the world, if you will. It symbolizes conquest. <clears throat> Many people think this white horse is a Christ Himself. Lots of reasons that, that that's not true. Okay, one of which Christ is in heaven, opening the seals. When He opens the seals, then the the judgment goes on the earth, and so therefore Christ will be in heaven, opening the seals. And going to earth to bring on the judgment of the earth. Okay? The second one is Christ is in heaven. When does Christ come back? Does he come back to the beginning of tribulation time? No. Comes back where? End of tribulation time. He doesn't come back to way out here. Okay? So it can't be Christ. And there's other reasons why we'll talk about that in a minute about the crowns and so forth and so on. But this is basically his conquest. This conquest is the things that happen on earth during this tribulation time, like the wars and and famines and all this kind of stuff other, others going on we see the other horses now this conquest is bring is bringing about and this is because of who does those things tribulation the main character if you will besides god himself besides christ okay the main character on of ruling and reigning during tribulation time is a person what we call antichrist okay so this is this is the Antichrist as he's doing and he's conquest and he's taking over the world. Remember the ten kings we had, where he's going to attack these set these ten kings and kill three of them. Okay, so this is the Antichrist that's doing all these things. So therefore, it says that, you know that he's going to come out and it says rider and he's riding with a bow. If you remember at the end of the purpose of the seven year covenant here was make a covenant between the Antichrist and the Jewish nation. This covenant was made to give the Jewish people a, a sense of security. These, this covenant was not made saying that the Jewish people believed and acknowledged the Antichrist as being God, anything else. This is just a, just a, a covenant saying they wanted security of the people around them. So when this was, when this was, was signed, then basically there's no more wars and no more fighting at that point in time. It's a time of peace, but it's a time of peace for a very short time, okay? Less than, somewhere around three and a half years, okay? But he said, you know, this is the depiction of, again, of the Antichrist and his rule and reign. He comes, he, call, he comes with a bow, but no arrows. So there's no conquest as far as wars or anything else with this conquest of the white horse, okay? <clears throat> so he comes in peace, if you will, to, to, to do those. He says, uh, from the second one, it says he's given a crown. This crown he is given is, a, is a, a, basically a Stephanos crown. Stephanos crown is a victor's crown. Okay? We know that anybody, you and I, one day will have these Stephanos crowns and we'll lay back at, our, at Christ's feet when we're in heaven. You know, type deal. But this is, this is a crown giving to the conqueror. Okay? Because he is, he is there. What kind of crown does, does Jesus have? Stephanus crown or a diadem crown? Diadem crown is, is a sense of deity or, or that type of deal, a rule and reign. 
So our Christ wears a diadem crown, not a Stephanus crown. So therefore, again, another reason why this is not the Christ, but this is probably the Antichrist that they're talking about here. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, I said he rode out into conquest, and we talked about the conquest that he's going to do. As he rides out into conquest, he will he defeat those ten kings, fight against them, three of them will die, and then, then the Antichrist will rule over the other seven for the rest of the tribulation time. Okay? So a white horse, the first of the apocalyptic, apocalyptic horses. Okay? And we know that uh, basically the, the horses of the apocalypse talks about the final destruction of the world. That's what apocalypse means. So that's talking about here, during tribulation time, this is based on the destruction of the world. Destruction of what we know is the then known world. Okay? Verse 3, second, second seal. <clears throat> Verse 3 says, uh, When the Lamb opened the second seal, this is Christ, opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Same thing again. Second creature, the one, not the first one, not the same one that did the first one, but this is the second creature. It says, come, or he's saying, go, go and do, go and do your bidding on the earth. Go and bring judgment, if you will. In verse 3. Verse 4 says, then another horse came out of, out, a fiery red one. His rider was given power to take peace from the earth and take, and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. Okay. <clears throat> The second horseman is a fire red horse, stands basically for war. This is what's going to happen, what he is, he's going to bring on the world, basically is, is war at, the, at that, that point in time. Uh, basically is to remove peace. Remember the first part of tribulation time. Those first years of tribulation out here in this first section is a time of peace because of the peace accord. Okay? As the white horse comes, he's going to end that peace and bring a war so that the Antichrist can, can defeat, the, defeat, defeat the three kings and take over the rule of the world. Okay? <clears throat> during this time is the first, and you can see, you can see the whole thing if you got your hand out. During this time, one of these sealed judgments out here talks about the wars that's going to happen. It's going to be the first of three world wars that's going to happen during, during tribulation time. The first one is right here at this point in time in the sealed judgment. Second one happens in, the, in basically the mid-tribulation time between three and, a half, three and a half years prior to the second half. And then the third one will happen at Armageddon at the end of tribulation time. Okay? So that's the, that's the three world wars that you're going to see. Verse 5, it says, comes with a, sharp, with a large sword. Sword depicts the, the wars are military invasions, if you will. Verse 5 is the next horseman here. Is a, is a black horse. Because verse 5 says, When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, just like the others. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. His rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Let me go and read verse, verse 6 while I'm here. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, a three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Basically, this, this next horse, black horse, is famine. The results of the consequences of war, if you will. The famine is going to be on the world. Famine is so great that it gives, him, it gives you, a, a, you know, basically an example, if you will, of a day's wages, working tired day to buy one quart of wheat. One quart of wheat through at that point in time, the Romans and all this kind of stuff, one quart of wheat would feed one person one day. So you work all day long to eat one day, and next day you had to work again to eat, eat the second day. If there, also in the next one, it says three quarts of barley. Three quarts of barley, you could buy, in a day's wages, you could buy three quarts of barley, which would feed a small family. So if you had a family, you bought barley because you couldn't afford to buy wheat. Okay? And it talks about here, and it had, they're having the scales, and the scales, they weigh this out. And they, they, it is such a devastating time where they do one quart or three quarts wheat and barley, the normal thing was like eight quarts of wheat for a day's wages or 24 quarts of barley for a day's wages. So you see the time, this time has gone down to where now you can only buy one and three rather than eight and 24, okay? Uh, it gives you, gives you, I think I read somewhere where the normal wage at this time that they're talking about here, you know, at, before the famine hit the thing was basically, it was 15 cents when they first started for a day's wages, okay, for us. One denarius is what it says, which is, equates about 15 cents. 
That's what that one day's wage you will get to work during this period of time and what you can buy with it because of the, the things that's happening on the world, okay? <clears throat> and then the second part of that says don't damage the oil and wine. Just to, just to basically leave that alone because that is medicinal purposes and because all the problems are happening, God is still going to take care of or provide for people during that point in time with the oil and wine, which is used for medicine purposes in this type of deal. So it only deals with food supplies, okay, of people having and being able to sustain themselves, okay? Verse 7, we'll get this. Verse 7, it says, When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. Verse 8 says, I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. His rider was named Death, and Hades was falling close behind him. They were given power over the fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by wild beasts, that of the, those of the earth. So here is the fourth, fourth creature, fourth, fourth horseman of the apocalypse. The fourth is a pale horse. This is, the, this is the, the symbol of death, if you will. This is basically the death of things that's going to happen. And during that period of time, in this, in this judgment, one fourth of the world's population is going to die. That's over a billion people that this is going to affect. As we see the other things going into the bowl judgments and also the trumpet judgment, many, many more times, this goes two-thirds of the world's population, two, a third more of these, on and on. You're going to see during this tribulation time, from basically the start of tribulation here at the end of tribulation, the great majority of the world's population is going to die. And he says here that death comes and then shortly after him, Hades. So he is saying here that as death comes, it then, then after the physical death happens, then it comes the spiritual death of all these people that are fighting against God, if you will, during this tribulation time. All the people that are lost, that dies during these judgment time deal, they immediately go to Hades. And they stay in Hades to the white throne judgment. <coughs> white throne judgment, they come back at the end of white throne judgment, out here at the end of millennium period, they come back to the white throne judgment where, they're, where God tells them, depart from me because I never knew you because you're lost. You never accepted Christ as Savior and they're thrown in the lake of fire. Okay? It says from those about, you know, with death and Hades, it says a fourth of the population of the world is done. One by the sword, and that means by the wars that's going to happen during this, during this period of time in tribulation. Secondly, by famine. Famine is starvation. So much of the world is going to starve. Now look at that one. Going, I'm not sure, according to this election and everything else, we may be in the same mess that they're in. Okay? You just don't know what this is. You know, this is, this is, this is what, what he says here, by famine. Next one is pestilence. Pestilence is plague and disease. You and all these people dying and all the famine that's going on, plague and disease is going to be rampant. It's going to be a great part of killing these billion people during, during this judgment. And the last one is by wild animals. And it said wild animals, the reason they said wild animals bringing on death and death and leaving the Hades there is because this food supply goes down. It goes down not only for mankind, it goes down for the animals also. So when it goes down for the animals, what do they do when they don't have food? They start attacking men, okay, and killing and eating people. So therefore, these things, this pale horse, this death in Hades, this death that comes into all aspects of things that's happening in the world at that time, okay? Either wars, starvation, pestilence, disease, you know, this type of deal, and then wild animals are attacking, okay? Use the four horsemen, first eight verses. We'll go from there and then we move on to verse seven, you know, continuing on through the things of the seal judgments that's coming type deal next week when we get into the next one type deal. And if you get your, get your handouts out and you can see how these things lay out, they'll give you the first four horsemen, then it's going to give you the next things that's going to come to the seal judgment, all the way leading up to the trumpet judgments, which comes in the second half of tribulation. Okay? Any questions? Yes, sir. Go. I believe that's probably true, okay? Because remember, when he announces judgment on the world, he didn't just announce it here and say, well, we're going to do it for, you know, a week, a month, or 10 months. 
He said, judgment is brought on the world for their disbelief and their things in objecting Christ. And it goes and ends right here. It ends at the end of tribulation. Second coming of Christ. Okay? This time it is. But until then, we live with it. Thanks, Arthur. Okay? Anything else? Okay. We should have got four verses. We got eight. So we did good today. Okay? Whatever. We'll work, work at that next week, and we'll have to introduce it. We can just go into the verses next week. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for helping us to understand, God. Why it's so important for us to reach out to our neighbors and friends and loved ones and even people we don't know and bring them to Christ. Because God is the end of these times when the rapture comes, whenever that may be, when tribulation begins so many times, Lord, all the people that are not saved will go into tribulation. This will be an actual time for them to live and die. And Father, we, just like it says here, if they die, Father, they go to eternal glory, damnation. Father, help us to reach out and touch others. Even though we aren't, we aren't here, we the saved have been raptured out. We're in heaven looking down on all these things, Father, but help us to know that, you know, for us, our job right now, after we're saved, is to reach out and witness to others, to bring them in the, into the God's family. Father, be with all our prayer requests today. Bless and keep each and every person, be especially close to them. Help them feel your presence in whatever the problems they have. But we know, God, that you're in every problem that we face each and every day. Everything that Satan brings on us, Father, comes through you. Nothing surprises you. It only surprises us. Father, help us to understand whatever the outcome, we win the war. We will be raptured out of here or we will go to, go to be with you even prior to the rapture if we, if we give up our lives. Bless deep and guide us. Father, bless each person here. Help them to stand strong this week against Satan's attack. And help them be a light unto the world. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Love you. See you next week.